Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Andrew's uh, weekly motivational call. He said he received a message somewhere during the afternoon concerning last week's call. Andrew, have fun. Well, I wanted to be a little bit interactive. So I'm going to throw some questions out and I expect some responses. Last week, we spoke about the parable of the talents and understanding <clears throat> that we need to make use of the gifts and the talents that have been given to us. And if we don't, we can find ourselves in some hot water. And we need to understand that we are unique, that we've been created on purpose, for a purpose. And we need to understand that nobody else can actually fill the void or the gap that we were created to fill. Even in this journey of life, if you only are called to touch one person's life, you might be the only person ever created that was meant to touch that person's life. So it's very important that we understand the significance of who we are. You know, very often we, we downplay ourselves and we think that we're unworthy and that we are not actually called for anything other than existence. But why would God make something so unique, so special, so spectacular if it had no purpose, if it had no role to fill in a community, in a society, in a family for a time such as this? So we need to understand that <clears throat> we are valuable. We are really valuable and we play a very important role in completing um, a very specific plan that has pre been predestined and, and, and carved out or etched out into eternity. So I think it's very important to, to reflect back upon what we shared last week about that parable of the talents where the master gave five talents to one servant and two talents to another and one to a last and the one who had five went and invested and worked with his master's money that when the master came back he could present him with 10 talents and then the um, one that had two talents came and presented four and the one who had one came back and presented only the one that he was given and if we become like that uh, servant that had only the one talent and did nothing with it and squander who we are we're actually causing a problem in the grand design of things because we're slowing down the process to something that was meant to be working. You were born. You've already gone through your childhood. You've already matured into adulthood. And you're in the world, in this space for a reason. But if you've hidden that talent, if you've hidden yourself in that and haven't found where you fit into the piece of the puzzle, then it's to the detriment of the entire plan. I mentioned at the end of the call last week that it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Every single one of us are not a puzzle on our own, but we're a piece in a puzzle. And we need to find where we fit in the puzzle to complete the picture. Now, we're all on this call intentionally tonight. Maybe you're part of this puzzle. Maybe there's something in these pieces here amongst the 14 or 15 of us on this call that you need to connect with to complete a picture. And it's important to know what you are, what piece you are in that puzzle. If you don't have a sense of identity and know who you are. And I'm not talking about knowing who you are in Christ. I'm talking about knowing who you are as an individual. What are your talents? What are your skills? What are your capabilities? What are your strong points? What are your weaknesses? What are your values? What are the things that make you smile? What are the things that make you laugh? What are the things that make you cry? What are the things that create you in your uniqueness to be you that you can fit into a puzzle to complete a picture? There's only so many pieces. You open that box of the jigsaw puzzle, it says 1,000 on the box. 
It doesn't say 1,002 or three. It's 1,000. There's specifically a number to complete that picture. It's very important that we understand who and what we are. Take the time to do the introspection. Make lists, write things down, converse with God, sit wherever you need to sit to look into who you are. It is nothing wrong with putting down on a list the things that upset you. This really irks me. Tick it off. This really gets my goat. Tick it off. This disgusts me. Tick it off. Because you've got to create strength in that identity so that you know exactly what you bring to the picture of the puzzle. Remember, you're only one piece. You don't complete the picture. You form part of the picture. But we've got to find all the pieces to make the picture whole. So we need to determine what is on our piece. How effective is our piece going to be? Is it a center piece? Is it a corner piece? Is it a top edge piece? Is it somewhere off to the left-hand side? We've got to determine who we are. I hope you're getting where I'm going with this. All right. So we go back to the parable of the talents. That's just one area of your life that you need to explore and understand and put some very deep thought and introspection into that. What are your talents? What are the things that you are gifted at or capable at doing that not everybody else is? Maybe you're a good administrator. Maybe you're a creative. Maybe you're a, a leader. Maybe you are a servant. You love serving people. You are uh, gifted in that area where hospitality is, is, is a really, really strong area in your life. Maybe you are analytical. Nothing wrong with that. We need analytical people. Maybe it's a gift to you. So you've got to spend time to understand what are the things that drive you? What are the things that motivate you? What are the things that touch on your passions in life? Because these things highlight your talents and when you understand what those things are, it's easier then to apply yourself to those things. John Maxwell says that we need to find the things that only we can do and then commit ourselves to doing those things. Everything else can be delegated. All right. So if you find that there's one specific area that you are very strong at and, and you can work that thing, focus on that. Make it your life mission. So maybe maybe the words I'm sharing with you tonight might actually make you think about the career that you're in or a path that you've gone down. And it might change your mindset in that. Maybe you'd start looking at something else because you realize, hang on, I am a piece in the puzzle, but I'm in the wrong puzzle. I got mixed up when the kids packed it away. All right. So maybe you, you with doing this sort of introspection, you might find that something needs to change. Because you don't want to spend 10, 20, 30, or 40 years of your life committed to something, and you're the odd piece to that puzzle. You actually don't fit. Find where you belong. Find those things in your life that drive you, that motivate you, that encourage you, that get you up in the morning. You know, There's not many people who are excited to get up every morning because they're in the wrong puzzle. You know? And yes, we all do need a job or we all do need to provide. But if you do this soul searching and this introspection and come to an understanding of what your identity is and what your gifting is and what those talents are and how you've been created and equipped, it makes it easier to make the right decisions for the right path to follow. One of the very first lessons I think we did way back in the beginning was a lesson on values and we spoke about values being the building blocks of who we are now this goes beyond that because the values are the foundation when you start building the talents and the abilities and the capabilities and the passions on top of that they are driven and grounded by those foundations those values that we have but it's very very important John Paul Getty also said that he would rather have 1% of 100 people's efforts 
than 100% of his own. Now, when we can identify the piece of the puzzle that we are and identify those talents, those strengths, those weaknesses, those challenges, whatever it is, when, when we can identify that and have a clear image in our mind and an understanding of who we are, then it's easy to find the other 99% or well, the other 99 people that we can get their 1% of their efforts from. Because that's when we start building the puzzle. That's when we start locking together and we start seeing the picture come to, to, to pass. So it's very, very important. Take time. Take this next week. Think about what we shared last week about the parable of the talents. Think about what I'm sharing with you now. Find your identity and then have confidence in that identity. Don't play yourself down. There is nobody else on this planet that is like you. Nobody. Nobody at all. You don't believe me? Look at your thumb. And look at those funny little lines that run over the surface of your thumb. Hmm? You're on for static and you see those lines. Yeah? Your lines don't look like my lines, Bru. Because my gift wrap is not the same as your gift wrap. Because I was made uniquely and on purpose. Zebeth, have you got lines on your thumb? Yeah, they don't match mine. I can promise you that. Because the one who created me didn't go to Pip and buy all the wrapping paper and wrap everybody the same. All right. There is nobody on this call that has my fingerprint. You have your own. That's how unique you are. And you know how long it must have taken to etch every single one of those lines into those fingers. It's incredible. That's why I say it's so important. It's vital. Find out who you are. What drives you? What are your passions? What motivates you? What irks you? What irritates you? What frustrates you? Know all of those things. Because, you know, when you do that, you are able to not only identify who you are in being that specific piece, but you're also able to establish boundaries in your life. And if you can establish those boundaries, it's easier then to let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because you will say yes to the things that align with your passions and your values and the things that drive you. And you'll say no to the things that will absolutely waste your time or frustrate you or irk you or destroy you. So it's absolutely essential. Let's spend time finding out who and what we are and why we are so unique in the piece of this puzzle. There's enough people on this call tonight that we could literally change the world if we all could identify exactly who we are and how we fit together. We'd know how it would work. We'd have a clear picture. And together, we could literally change the world. So that's what I want to share with us tonight. Andrew, you said you wanted some feedback from some of the people. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you something about how unique everybody is on this planet. Many, many years ago, I was uh, working in forensics in the police force as a fingerprint expert. And many, many times, we found fingerprints on a scene of a crime scene and we found similar looking fingerprints in the files and then there's only six points that you could mark out that corresponds between the crime scene fingerprints and the file fingerprints the court won't accept that you need the seventh one now if you do the maths i'm not going to give you a maths lesson now if you do the maths, the chance of anybody having seven identical uh, points of reference on a fingerprint is 495 billion to one. We're only 8 billion people on this planet. 
So even identical twins don't even have fingerprints looking close to each other. That's how unique everybody is made. And you still have the audacity not to trust your creator after he's been so carefully created you. It's, it's scary that people don't trust their creator. After you've been made individually, everybody's different. Even identical twins, there's always somewhere a little bit of a difference somewhere. But the most obvious one is in the fingerprints. That's how unique everybody on the score is. And if, if God decided to give you 10 talents, then he decided to give you 10. Some gives, gets 40, some gets 100, some gets 1. It's what you do with the talents. That's important. Right, who's got questions for Andrew? He's, he's looking anxious. He wants to answer. <laughs> Silence. Silence. Andrew, I think I must point them. Well, I'm I'm glad to see uh, Mark Boo on the call with us. I'd like to hear something from him. <clears throat> Johan got his hand up. Let's give Johan a chance and then I'll attack Mark. Hi, Stephen. Thank you. Hello, Andrew. Hello, hello. Um, what, what, um, what I took out of last week's um, session was basically, and it's something that a lot of people do, um, that they um, they just sit back. They believe that God will look after them. There will be something to eat. There will be somewhere to stay and uh, and live a, a good life. They, they must be like the guy that buried the talent and they sit back. And that, that is something that, I don't know what's that beautiful word you used that uh, um, irritates you. What's the word you used? It pees you off. <laughs> that irks you. <laughs> that irks you. Oh, that thing irks me like you cannot believe that people just sit back and expect other people to make things work for them. Um, on that scale, I suppose I'm, I'm not the kind of person that that can go to people like that and, and grab them by the throat and let them melt themselves. So I reach out to some of them and I try and help them. So I don't know, is that the right thing to do, to try and help people that way? Because if you leave them, they'll be like the number one, the guy with the one talent, he buries his coin. Um, if you if you reach out and you help them a little bit, maybe you get a number a guy with the two coins, and maybe even a guy with the five uh, five coins. Who you knows? That's my question. Thank you very much, by the way, for last week and tonight's session. It's very mind boggling. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Now, I think it is important to to reach out to people and to to try and determine how they may fit into the puzzle. But you won't necessarily change them. Um, you know, the, the three servants worked for exactly the same master. They had the same opportunities. They had the same work environment. They had essentially the same lifestyle. And they, they were three completely different individuals. But two of them shared the master's ideals and understood his heart and his passions. And so they acted accordingly. And the other one, as the master said, was a wicked and lazy servant because he squandered what wasn't even his. So, you know, you, you have these people that do come across your path. You have people that plead poverty and want to live a beggar's lifestyle. And you try to help to change that. But they're happy and comfortable in that comfort zone and they'd rather be there than move out and that's where values come in that's what's so important the other awesome uh, parable in the, in the new testament that jesus gives us is the story of the prodigal son and that prodigal son takes his inheritance and he goes and he squanders it and all sorts of nonsense and he lands up living in a pigsty eating whatever's left in the trough after the pigs have eaten and eventually he comes to his senses and he says if i return to my father's house and ask him if I can be a servant in his house. At least I would live better than I'm living now in the pigsty. But 
when I say he came to his senses, he got to a point where everything was stripped away from him, except for the values that were instilled in him by his father, because he could identify the foundation. He could identify where he had come from. And when he got home to his father's house, and his father had been waiting for him for however long he'd been gone, and his father was waiting at the gate at the end of the garden, and the son came towards him, and the father embraced him, and the son said, look, I just want to be a servant in your house. And the father said, no, rubbish. You're my son, and you'll always be my son, because the foundation had been set. He had been raised in an environment of love and grace and mercy and compassion and forgiveness and all those amazing footprints and characteristics of, of God that existed there. But now you get somebody like someone that you're referring to or this wicked and lazy servant. They don't know their values. They don't, they don't identify the foundation. So they can have nothing to really go back to. So they build a foundation in poverty or in uh, in begging or in, uh, what do you call it, in becoming a thief or whatever. They, they build a foundation in that because the core values of their life don't exist because maybe they came from a, a broken situation. Maybe they were abandoned. Maybe they spent their childhood in and out of a juvenile facility. Maybe they were bounced from one foster home to another. Now, I'm not saying that person can never change, but what needs to happen is they need to get to a place where some values are instilled, that they can start to find building blocks to build an identity. Because at the moment, there is no genuine identity. Their identity is built in their actions rather than in the core of who they are as a person. Good. You on and a thumbs up. So he's happy with that response from Andrew. Anybody else who wants to uh, make Andrew's life difficult for me today? <laughs> Andrew gave me too much work this weekend, so I need to I need to punish him. Mark, what work did I give you this weekend? Huh? Yes, I'm here. What can I do for you, sir? <laughs> Mark, how many talents did you receive from our creator? Oh boy. I had a blessing one time, and I was told that I had received all the gifts the good Lord can can give me. Well, I do, and it's them. been a, it's been really fun trying to learn them and understand them and figure out how to use them or if I'm supposed to use them. Mm. If that makes sense, well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start telling a story, and you're gonna finish it. I want to demonstrate through Mark. How God used him and the talents that he gave him because he did the work during uh, daytime, during wake, awake hours. How God used the talents that he gave Mark to overnight make a change in his life. Mark, can you remember, oh, it must be roughly 18 months ago. When I sent you a message that you're in a gifted position on a gift of legacy board and you will be in the legend position, and the next morning you were in legend. Can you remember that day? I do remember that. I do remember that. And you were sleeping. Yes, yes, while I was sleeping. <laughs> so why did God work while Mark was this. sleeping? Why did God decide to do that move while Mark was sleeping? It's because he used the talents during his awake hours for a week. He used the talents that God gave him every day when he was awake so that when he can go to sleep, that he can leave the rest of the work over to God. Yeah, you can't sit back and expect God is going to do everything. When you're awake, you need to work. Use the talents. But then things will happen when you sleep. Well, I also think yeah. you receive direct and divine um, inspiration while you sleep. You might not always yes. remember it when you wake up, but I do believe you get direction when you sleep. 
Now, the stuff I dream doesn't come from my own mind. That I can tell you. It is too weird and wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I remember a lot of it. All right. Anybody else that wants to, to add on something or ask Andrew? There is somebody now coming on board. Where is all the Americans today? It's only June and Yvonne that's on. And there's uh, Erika now at last. You like you speak there's to me? Mark. There's Mark, there's Mark. Elizabeth. Where's Elizabeth? Elizabeth, there's a good photo on who's team, team EC. <laughs> I'm here too. <laughs> Erica's I see here. You, um, you always do. So, the, yeah, yeah that's, then it's five Americans. It's, that's not too bad. Linda, Linda, Linda are you also in here. America? Are you not in Germany? Oh, Linda is also American. Us, Andrew, <laughs> they are numbering us here. <laughs> Six out of 18. That's a good number. Okay, thank if there's nothing this. else. Yes, there's I just want to say, Andrew, thank you. Thank you for this topic. Thank you for your words today. They mesh very much very much with what my middle of the night thinking was last night. So thank you for this. It's a pleasure. Andrew will always have a message for everybody that hops on the call. Well, then we finish for today. Andrew, thank you again. Uh, as usual, whatever Andrew needs to talk about comes quite late on a Sunday. Uh, I was thinking at one stage to move the call to another day, but because of the uh, the topics that we discuss and, and the days of the week, I think a Sunday night is a good, good uh, time slot for the South Africans and then a Sunday afternoon for the Americans. It's... Uh, just after lunch, if you eat the way South Africans eat early on a Sunday. All right, you can unmute, say so bye, see I'll, you next what, week, same time. One more thing. Oh, Andrew got one more, one more thing. thing. One, one more thing, one more thing. There's a lovely scripture that says, as long as heaven and earth remain, so will seed time and harvest, which means that we can't sit back and do nothing like Johan was talking about because somebody's got a plant and somebody's got a harvest. So as long as we're all still living, all still breathing and the sun is still rising and setting, we have a responsibility to work with who we are to make a difference. And a lot of people say to me, you know, and challenge the times and the hours and, you know, when is the Lord going to come back again? It's not for us to know. But he said clearly in the scriptures that he will return when everybody on this planet has had an opportunity to hear of him and know him. So that could be in another thousand years time if the world continues the way the world's going now. So we can't sit back and wait. We need to participate. We need to be active in, in everything in this world, in this society, and apply who we are. But in this week, you have homework. Go and spend some time doing that introspection. Make those lists. Do the things I spoke about to try and identify in your heart and in your mind who and what you are. And maybe next week we'll give you an opportunity to share what you've discovered about yourself. And write these things down. Make them known. Take them out of your head put them somewhere physical so that it becomes something you can act upon. You know, they say that a, a, a dream is just a dream until it's written down, then it becomes a goal. Then it's something tangible that you can work to, towards. This image of yourself will only remain an image of yourself until you write it down so that you can be, become comfortable with it and identify with it and apply it into your heart and into your mind so that you can become that peace that you're intended to be. Have a wonderful week. We will see you next week, Sunday. No, no you're not finished, Andrew. Sorry. You only requested oh. a prayer to close. Is that, what language is that? Russian? Yeah, that sounds like Russian. That spelling is definitely Russian. <laughs>
It's just a finger typo, that's all. <laughs> I can't even read it. All right, so you would like me to pray. Again. <laughs> well, let's do that while the mosquitoes attack me. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for who you are. And we thank you that you have created each and every one of us on purpose and for purpose. Thank you for your divine plan for this nation, for our nations, for our community, our society, for our families. Thank you for every single one of us on this call that we are here for a time such as this. And maybe we don't all know exactly what piece we are in the puzzle, but I ask you that you will spend some time with us as we spend time with you to help us to understand who we are and what we are and why we have been created so that we can make an impact in this time. Maybe it's just one footprint that we need to carve out. Maybe it's a hundred, but you know, and your word says that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And so we trust in you and we yield ourselves to you and leave ourselves in your hand that you can do with us what you intended to do. I pray that as we spend time in this week searching our souls, searching our minds, and searching our hearts, that we'll come to an understanding of how unique we are, how powerful we are, and how precious we are, because you have created us both uniquely and wonderfully. And I pray too, Father, that you just continue to watch over us and protect us. As your word says, that no weapon fashioned against us will ever prosper. I speak life into that word right now, and I speak it into our lives, and I declare, let it be so for us and our families. Let no weapon fashioned against us ever prosper. I pray, Father, that you continue to, to lift us up and encourage us and lead us and guide us by the power of your word and that we'll have a greater understanding of how important we are to you as you are to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. you very much. Have a good evening. On that note, we are finished. See you next week. Thank you. <clears throat> Bye. Bye. Andrew. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye.